Eight cars, 116 movies. Wait. Eight movies, 116 cars. I'm gonna rank every car in the Fast and Furious franchise. Let's go. First, some rules. I'm only gonna list cars that characters with spoken lines interact with or drive, not cars that chill in the background. That would take too long. And frankly, it took me too long to make this list. I looked like I was in the gosh dang Azkaban prison trying to pass the time. Also, if I feel like talking about certain cars for a little bit, I'm gonna do that because this is my show and James told me I can do whatever I want. And remember, this is just my opinion, so if you disagree, let me know in the comments so we look good in the YouTube algorithm. All right, let's start from the top. The worst one, number 116, Roman's Purple Eclipse from Too Fast, Too Furious. Probably the ugliest car ever put on screen. Just look at this thing. Purple with huge chrome rims, an AutoZone tear spoiler, and a ride height like a rock crawler. Horrible. Poor Tyrese, man. They did my boy dirty with this one. Number 115, Brian's Evo from Too Fast, Too Furious. This baby poop green Lancer is a disaster. But why you would ever make an Evo 7 one of the most fierce rally cars ever look like an AutoZone gift card special is beyond me. I said forget about it, cuz. Chrysler Town and Country, ZZ's Touareg, Alfa Romeo 940, this boring Maserati. Number 110, Bentley Continental GT from Fate of the Furious. This two-tone Bentley is just plain ugly. Why do they keep doing my man Tyrese like this? I'll give them props for giving the Continental GT some OG tuner flavor, but with its thick stature and red-white paint job, this thing reminds me of Santa Claus. Number 109, Slapjack Supra from Too Fast, Too Furious. Apparently, this is the same Supra as the orange one in the first film, just with a fresh coat of paint. A big yikes from me. Infinity G35, the silver and black WRX, Hobbs's International Truck, Danny's Civic Coupe. Number 104, Vince's Maxima from The Fast and the Furious. I just think it's hilarious that they gave Vince, who is arguably the true antagonist of the first film, a Nissan Maxima. It makes sense now why he was such a jerk. He just felt insecure. Don't be so toxic, man. The gray and gold S14, Tej's 458, Brian's McLaren MP412-C, the BMW M5 crew cars, Shaw's Lambo, Roman's Lambo, the skydiving challenger. Number 96, the Lycan Hypersport from Furious 7. Honestly, when I first saw the Hypersport in Fast 7, I was heated. There are more videos of it driving in video games than in real life. It's not a real car. And you know what? It's the worst car on this list. Eclipse, you get a pass. Lycan, you live here now. The Morimoto 350Z. Number 94, the Demo Derby Monte Carlo from Too Fast, Too Furious. Yeah, it's not a flashy car, but I love Roman's intro scene at the Demo Derby. It was so cool for the Fast and Furious to show another side of car culture, and I really applaud them for that. The yellow S197 Mustang GT. Number 92, Dom's Charger with blower from Fast and Furious, four. Number 91, Dom's Charger without a blower, and Matt Black now from Fast Five. Shaw's Aston Martin, Roman's Bugatti, Chevy Suburban. Cypher's Land Cruiser, Tej's AMG GT, Nissan 370Z. Number 84, the blue and orange S15 from Tokyo Drift. Ah, the Mona Lisa of drifting. Or at least that's what Twinkie calls it. My opinion, eh, might have been sweet at the time, but I don't think that color combo has aged well at all. I will admit though that the S15 Sean drives at the end of the film is a lot better. Letty's Rally Fighter, Subi WRX, Letty's Viper, Shaw's Jag F-Type. Number 79, the Ice Charger from Fate of the Furious. Look, I know a fair amount of you might have this charger as your favorite one, but not me. It's so outlandish, even by Fast and Furious standards, just not for me. Brian's GTR. Number 77, the Pantera GTS from Fast and Furious. Hey, Vince is back. Where's your Maxima, dude? Hans WRX, Land Rover Defender, the Dodge Demon Crew Cars, Letty Chevelle, the Blue Yenko Camaro, Nila's Blue RX-8. Number 70, the Blue Porsche 996 GT3 RS from Fast Five. Yo, shout out to my boy Tony for this one. Old donut heads know, I miss you bro, come visit us soon. Jaguar F-Type, Dom's Plymouth GTX. Hobbs's Land Rover Defender, the skydiving Jeep. Number 65, Tej's Eagle Speedster from Fast and Furious 6. I think it was really cool of Fast and Furious producers to include this car. The Eagle Speedster is basically a super resto modded Jaguar E-Type and it's a distinctly inspired choice for the franchise. Nice. Dom's Charger, Brian's GTR, 
the ICE RAM with Trax, Brian's Skyline GTR. Number 60, Mia's black NSX from Fast and Furious. Don't sleep on Mia, man. As we'll see later on, she's got great taste. Shout out to Jordana Brewster. Hey, the Charger Bank Heist Cars, another Dom Challenger, the Jock Viper from Tokyo Drift. I bet you thought I was gonna put this way further up on the list, huh? Why? Just because I have a model Viper on my desk and I wish I had spiky hair like this Jock guy, that's racist. Plus, it's a Gen 3 and I'm more of a Gen 2 kind of guy. Moving on, the Hulk Volkswagen from Tokyo Drift. Look, this car is usually at the bottom of everyone's list, but not mine. Twinkie is a hustler in the truest sense of the word, and I'd be disappointed. No, devastated if you didn't drive a Volkswagen with Hulk hands glued on. Uh, number 55, the Evo Drift car from Tokyo Drift. This car is a perfect example of the producers almost getting car culture. They knew drifting would blow up when they were making this movie. They also knew kids liked those dang Evos. So why not put them together? Well, the Evo is all wheel drive, which kind of makes it not a great drift car. Mm -hmm. They tried. The Ripsaw Tank, the Major's Mustang with no engine, Hobbs's Navistar MXT. Number 51, Letty's Jensen Interceptor from Fast and Furious 6. This thing is LS swapped, it's got dope wheels, and apparently decent air conditioning. I love it. Ford Torino, Orange Julius's RX-7, the yellow E39 540i, Hobbs's Rhino. Number 46, the Koenigsegg from Fast Five, when Fast Five came out in 2011, Koenigsegg was a much smaller company, and for that reason, I think it was really cool of the producers to include the Swedish company in their huge global phenomenon of a franchise. Tej's Ferrari FXX, Ford Fairlane, Roman's Camaro, the stolen GT40, Letty's Red Corvette, Hans LFA. Number 38, Edwin's DC2 Integra from the Fast and the Furious, Monica! The Rambo Lambo, the cool white Mustang, Rico Santos's Supra, Dom's Chevy Fleetline, the skydiving WRX, Dom's other Roadrunner, 31, Tej's Ford Galaxy from Fast Five. I love that they put Ludacris in a Galaxy and makes pimping all over the world that much easier. Takashi's 350Z, Letty's 240SX, that's actually pretty sick. Number 29, Suki's S2000 from Too Fast, Too Furious. Apparently, Devin Aoki had never driven anything besides a golf cart before Too Fast, Too Furious, so I'm actually really impressed he was able to clear that bridge on the first try. <laughs> Dom's Grand National, Dom's Barracuda, that weird Corvette convertible thing, the Havana Chevy Bel Air. Number 24, the 1971 Monte Carlo from Tokyo Drift. I remember seeing a little blurb about this car in Hot Rod Magazine and thinking it was the coolest car ever. It really appealed to my small town sensibilities as a kid and it still does today. I really wanna build something like this. The Chevy R3500 truck. Number 22, Mia's Blue Integra GSR from the Fast and the Furious. I told you Mia had good taste. This Integra is sweet. I'm gonna go for a drive. Yes, I do want to go for a drive. Hector's EG Civic Hatch. Number 20, we're in the top 20 now. The F-Bomb Camaro from Fast and Furious. Here's another Hot Rod Magazine car. They didn't actually use David Freiberger's real Camaro, but built a few replicas of it. Also, we're huge fans of Roadkill. We'd love to do something with you guys. Dom's other, other Roadrunner, Johnny Trans S2000. He's got 100K under that hood, dude. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Number 17, Jesse's Jetta from The Fast and the Furious. This is probably one of the most iconic cars of the first film, and it's not even in my top 10. Frankie Muniz owned it at one point, so that's pretty cool. Han's sick C-Series tow truck. Love that thing. Number 15, the flip car from Fast and Furious 6. Dude, it's a freaking F1 car that flips other cars over and does it in real life. How freaking sick is that? It can crab walk, look at this. Number 14, the iconic silver R34 from Too Fast, Too Furious. You know, for being such a fan favorite, it's funny how little screen time this car has. In the weakest movie, too. But clearly, this car had a huge impact on the scene. Everyone went from wanting a Supra to wanting a Skyline. I mean, it's on my shirt. That's how big of an impact this thing had. The train heist truck, the green eclipse from the Fast and the Furious. I feel bad about leaving this one out of my top 10, and I'm sure some of you are gonna have some choice words for me. It's really hard to put in order. Let's keep going, you'll see what I mean. Number 11, the Ford Escort from Furious 7. Just look at this thing. All right, we're in the top 10. These are the 10 greatest cars in the Fast and Furious series. Number 10, Paul's white Supra from Furious 7. They ended the movie like the end of the first movie. A Supra and a Charger racing side by side. I know I'm not the only one who cried when Brian's 
white Supra pulled off into the sunset. I can't believe a Fast and Furious movie made me cry. Number nine, Roman's Caprice from Furious 7. I don't think people really remember this car, but Pumphrey and I really dig it. So I'm gonna be bold and put it at number nine. It's just so cool. Number eight, the red Ford Lightning from the Fast and the Furious. The Gen 2 Lightning is the coolest truck ever produced and it will never be defeated. I wish they would make a prequel all about this truck and the Racers Edge shop. Put me in it. I took one acting class in community college and it was probably the hardest class of my life. Number seven is Han's RX-7 from Tokyo Drift. This Veil side body kit equipped RX-7 is still one of the most iconic cars to come out of the franchise's third installment, inspiring JD love to fans all over the world. Not bad for being the second coolest car in Tokyo Drift. Number six, the yellow R33 GTR from the Fast and the Furious. Okay, let's be real. This R33 is probably the most underrated car in the whole series. But you forgot all about it, huh? Well, I don't blame you. It barely had any screen time, and the car's pilot is basically the only person from the first movie to never make another appearance in the series. Legend has it that after filming the movie, the Big Bird GTR spent a lot of time racing, eventually blowing its motor. Then some guy in Wisconsin bought it without the VIN number, and it met its untimely doom in the Crusher. RIP. Streets closed, pizza boy. Number five, the RB26 Swap 67 Mustang from Tokyo Drift. And this car made a lot of people mad back in the day, mostly old guys. But I don't get it. It's a marriage of everything we love from both the land of the free and the rising sun. But I won't lie, it probably should have been lowered a few inches. Number four, Dom's RX-7 from the Fast and the Furious. Fun fact, they didn't use any rotary sound effects for this car. But despite that, it's still the best looking in Dom's crew. Peep those veil side Andrew's racing wheels. Mm. Number three, Dom's dad's charger, the fast and the furious. The scene where Dom shows Brian this car is one of my favorites in the whole series and establishes his ride of choice from there on out. What a beast of a machine. All right, number two, the orange Supra from the Fast and the Furious. There's a certain feeling I get when I see the orange Mark IV on screen every time I watch the Fast and the Furious. It takes me back to a different time. And I'm sure I'm not alone. You can just hear the hip hop, new metal soundtrack, and Vin Diesel saying smoke just by looking at this thing. So what could possibly be on top of my list? Well, it's not one car, but three. Number one, the black Civics from the Fast and the Furious. A lone semi-truck lumbers down the freeway at night. Suddenly, three identical Honda Civics emerge from the darkness and begin their assault. These are the first cars we see in the Fast and the Furious series, and they changed the world. How many guys do you know tried to make their cars look like these in high school? I'm betting a lot. Spoilers, underglow, loud exhaust. It was a simple combination, but it was sweet. When you see these cars on screen, you know what's about to happen. Look, the truth is this top 10 could be in any different order depending on who you ask. You watch this video all the way through because you care about these cars, because they mean something to all of us. I think I say this every time we talk about the Fast and the Furious, but truly, if these 10 cars never made it to the movie screen, Donut would not exist. So a big thank you to those movies and thank you for celebrating these cars with me. Thanks to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring this week's episode. Curiosity Stream is a dope new streaming service with over 2,400 documentaries, nonfiction titles, and exclusive originals. And it's only $2.99 a month. That means I get to watch my favorite show, The Secret Life of Dogs, for mere pennies a day. Oh man, now I want a puppy. Oh, hello. Oh. And guess what? You, our donut fam, get your first month for free if you sign up at curiositystream.com slash wheelhouse and use the promo code wheelhouse. Thank you again, Curiosity Stream, for sponsoring this. Support our shows by supporting our sponsors. Thank you. Thanks for watching Wheelhouse. Uh, this is a really fun episode to do. I'm sure everyone's got some opinions about my picks. Let me know your top three cars down in the comments. I'm curious. Check out episode 100 of Up to Speed right here. It's all about the GTR. Uh, that was a really fun episode to do too. We've talked about Fast and Furious before on the show. Uh, check it out right here. Shout out to Jimmy for uh, watching every movie and writing down all the cars. And then thanks to me for putting them in order. Anyway, follow me on Instagram at Nolan J Sykes. Follow Donut at Donut Media. Be nice. I'll see you next time.